Hey. Get a free car. Ant infestation included. It's comics and shots, aka comics and drinks. A completely improvised semi comedic music by Howard Stern's Mick the Nerd, aka YouTube and TikTok's Mick the Man, aka Mick the Maverick, aka a guy with an infesta infestation in his goddamn backseat of his car. Ugh. So many ants. So many freaking ants. Today's subject Martin Blank the Gibbon. Introduced in Amazing Spider-Man, uh, it's how it is babbledy. I have it literally right here. Uh, one ten, created by Stanley. Uh, his origin is really, really sad. Gibbon is a mutant, like uh, who was ridiculed all his life for having like weird hands and feet, uh, monstrous appearance, yada yada yada. And one day, um, Spider-Man, while out, he just throws away his camera because of typical Spider-Man frustration, and then Gibbon catches it, you know, with his crazy monkey powers. And then Spider-Man thanks him, and then Gibbon thinks, Hey, what if I become a superhero and then team up with Spider-Man? That sounds fun. And so Gibbon makes himself a big old monkey man costume, Meets Spider-Man again, asks him to team up, and then Spider-Man just laughs in his goddamn face and just tells him, "Hey, man, being a superhero is not how it's cracked up to be." And it's like, uh, it's just so freaking mean, so freaking mean, and even worse considering in the next issue, Craven the Hunter ends up like conning him into teaming up with him. But, you know, it's Craven. Craven's evil. You know, it's like, they had the honor stuff later, but he full on just wants to take out Spider Man, but can't because he broke his arm by trying to rip off the plot of King Kong, that's canon. And so he uses this mystical herb that essentially links his mind to Martin Blank, making him just as evil as he is, but. While Gibbon is fighting Spider-Man, Gibbon breaks free of the control, and, you know, it implies, hey, he's still a good guy. Maybe he'll come back and be a good guy, like the Prowler. Well, no. I've read a lot of Spider-Man throughout the years, and I know for a fact that Gibbon just goes back to being a villain, even though he wanted to start out as a superhero, but apparently we just gotta give Spider-Man a bunch of heavies to fight, you know, because he doesn't have enough. He doesn't have enough. We can't just bring back the looter. Mountain Man. Man Mountain Marco. God, that guy's name sucks. Or is it Marco the Man Mountain? Who cares? Terrible name. Terrible name. Ugh. And don't you dare bring up the Nick Spencer's air run because I'm still crying about that. Ugh. Technically, it was a good run. Technically, why did he have to die? Why couldn't he just be a superhero? What? Why? Like, why? Why does his life have to suck so bad? And there are a lot of other Spider-Man characters, side characters, and villains that are like that, too. And it's like, you know, part of it's due to the CCA, the Comics Code Authority, where villains aren't allowed to redeem themselves. And part of it just seems like just fitting in with the status quo of villains just staying villains, and that bugs me. And, you know, Martin Blank is a mutant. Martin Blank the Gibbon is technically a mutant, so, you know what? Knowing that he dies later in the Nick Spencer run, I'm just going to headcanon that he was resurrected on Krakoa. And then he left immediately after because he knew what was going to go down. Hey, man, mind work. Yeah, I also had Cannon Mindworm was brought back to life because, dear God, look up how Mindworm died. So depressing. So depressing. Yeah, but, You know, Silver Age, it just looked like Martin Blank was intended to be, like, a hero who was almost on the wrong track at first, but they didn't pull through, and that really bugs me. <sighs> Subject of Miss Potential and... 
I have not gotten to Gwen Stacy's death yet, but yeah, um, Gwen has a lot of missed potential herself, primarily in how she either just feels down on herself for what happened with her dad with Spider-Man, or how she messed things up with Peter, yada yada yada. Or just fawning over Peter. She doesn't really... She didn't really have a lot... In terms of career prospects. And ironically... MJ was supposed to be the rival to Gwen. The antithesis to Gwen. Who was good. And so they tried to make her catty. And vibe... Like... Just party loving. And can't be held down. But ironically that made her more likable. And so you think that they would have tried to like... Just change it up with Gwen, have her, like, be more proactive, not cry as much, be, talk more about being a science student. Yeah, she was a science student. It's like, thank you, Amazing Spider-Man, and the Spectacular Spider-Man cartoon for bringing that up quite a bit. But it barely ever, was barely ever brought up in the original Silver and Bronze Ages. Yeah. Ugh. The closest thing she got to real character insight after she died was that horrible Sins Past story, which... Uh, thank you, Nick Spencer, for black cunning. Yeah. You still killed off one of my favorite B-list Spider-Man villains, but you also retconned one of the worst Spider-Man stories that was so bad, even the guy who wrote it tried to retcon it. Uh. Ah, well. If you get too lost thinking about what could have been, you won't focus on what's good in the now. So I'm just gonna look at it as it is, and like it for what it is. But still, critique it for what it is. That's me. What are you doing with your life? What are you doing with your strife? With that... Like, comment, and subscribe, or donate if you're feeling nice, share it with a bear, and always remember, praise be to the blood elk, fear the stabopotamus, and death to Kronos. <sighs> My dad just would not clean up pumpkin shells in his old car. The ants had a feast. Also, my shirt had some soda stripped on it, so that just summoned them from beneath the cracks. So we have to deal with that tomorrow. Yes. Have a night, folks. <laughs>